Hi everyone, I am Dr. Fawaz from PIDC and today we are going to discuss about the differences in pulp chamber and pulp canal between the permanent molars and the primary molars and how the primary molars are a challenging teeth when you perform pulpectomy. So let me start off by getting my laser pointer. Yeah. Alright, so first thing that you must know that in primary molars, the root canals are very thin and ribbon shaped. So ribbon shape means like this. So if you look at from the side, it is broad, very broad, but from the buccal side, it will appear as very narrow. Alright, so this makes the pulp extirpation very, very difficult in primary molars because you cannot file each and all the walls and there will be chances that there will be some pulp still attached to the dentine after you finish. So for this reason we call the uh, in pulpectomy we call the procedure as chemo mechanical preparation of the canal. So chemo means we have to rely on chemical agents to dissolve the pulp remnants which we may not be able to remove using mechanical methods. So the best uh, disinfectant uh, chemical that we use for dissolving in organic matter is sodium hypochlorite 0.1% or 1% or maximum 4, uh, 5% but in permanent molars we more or like have a conical uh, root canals which are very easy to file and do root canal debridement so therefore you would see that when you remove pulp from a maxillary central incisor it comes out sometimes as in toto but not in primary molars okay maybe in the distal root yes but mesial root very difficult so you see the difference is very very clear distal root is a little broader the mesial root is very narrow then we have the white apical foramen in primary molars this is because as soon as the primary molars erupt the resorption starts to happen in the periapical area so sometimes you may have apical constriction like here right and sometimes you may not have if you do not have then you should be very careful otherwise when you put your files while doing pulpectomy the files will pass the apical foramen and cause injury into the periapical tissues now in order to avoid that the recommendation is that you have to keep your working length 2 to 3 millimeter short of the radiographic working length okay or the radiographic apex so that is how you will uh, ensure that you don't uh, um, traumatize the periapical tissue right so otherwise we have a very really high pulp horn especially the mesiobuccal pulp horn in primary molars right and these are the ones that get exposed if our cavity preparation is not done cautiously so sometimes in deep caries where the pulp is still vital or shows reversible pulpitis we need not enter the pulp at all we can do something called as stepwise caries excavation or we can do entire pulp capping or we can just have uh, incremental caries excavation. So you have to be very careful for the mesiobuccal pulp horn. Now is the mesiobuccal pulp horn also is a challenge because if you are on having a proximal caries, right? So you want to remember that once you have a proximal caries, the axial wall, which will be here somewhere, will be very close to the pulp. So again, the chances of pulpal exposure is very high. For this reason that the proximal caries in primary dentition normally involves the primary pulp horn or is approximating the mesiobuccal pulp horn okay and for this reason we always go for pulpotomy when there is a deep caries involving the proximal surfaces uh, otherwise also we have uh, the primary root canals which have uh, fins right so you see here that there is a ribbon in this area and then there are two root canals so the area between the two root canals is called as the fin and again you cannot put your instrument into the fin and therefore we have to rely on uh, chemomechanical preparation that means the chemical that we use sodium hypochloride so that flush frequently so that this pulp will get dissolved and will get removed this is one of the reason why the chances of having post-operative pain or failure of the pulpectomy is quite high in teeth which have chronic infections 
So it's very important that we do a very good chemomechanical preparation. So here also you see there's a small depression here, okay, and the canals on the either side. So it's like very, very uh, difficult to remove the pulp from this area and we have to depend upon flushing with sodium hypochlorite. Uh, in this uh, uh, image also you will see that pulp horns are quite high and therefore the caries preparation, the caries excavation has to be done very very carefully, especially the deep uh, caries lesions. Uh, lastly we see that the pulp canals can be very thin and narrow and they can be flaring outwards. So if you are using your H files for pulp extirpation, the chances are very high that you will perforate the root canal wall. So that means you have to be very very careful and therefore you have to start using your 6 number file, 10 number file, H, um, K file and then slowly progress uh, onwards. So pulpectomy is a challenge. Of course we can have that we can damage the periapical area. We will have remnants of pulp tissue in the fin area. We will have narrow canals which we may not be able to negotiate and therefore uh, some of our colleagues from the western world, you know, they do not prefer uh, pulpectomy. They prefer to go in for extraction because the chances of uh, infection or post-operative infection or relapse of infection is quite high, especially in chronically inflamed pulp, which especially have a chronic dental relapses. While our colleagues from India, they are uh, they like to do pulpectomy and try to save the tooth. They have a lot of armamentarium they want to use. Uh, especially uh, the patient characteristics are different in western world and in Asia and therefore the uh, difference in choice of uh, treatment procedure that uh, people uh, dentists prefer. So that is it. So nothing is wrong, nothing is right. It all depends upon the case selection and your expertise. So go ahead and if you want to do a pulpectomy, go good job and it should be okay. I'm going to go for an extraction, go for an extraction. Don't forget to put a space maintainer. Things will still turn out to be okay. Okay. So that's it from me for this uh, small presentation. It's already seven minutes. I wanted it to be four minutes, but nevertheless, I hope you found this uh, small presentation useful and I'll see you next time. Bye.